I want to welcome you to our Sunday night service right here at Liberty Baptist Church. And uh, we'll let you remain seated for our opening songs. And if you sing well, who knows, but we'll start out that way. And uh, we'll start with our theme chorus, and then draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. Number 375, we'll sing that right after this opening chorus. song, Draw Me Near. Isn't it great to be in the Lord's house on Sunday night? Amen. You can get just a little closer to the Lord. And uh, you know, the folks that uh, don't come on Sunday night, if they've never tried it, they, they don't know what they're missing, you know. You can get just draw a little closer before that work week starts. And uh, you've got to go into the world. It's nice to know that you spent some time, some special time with with not only God and His Word, but His people. Amen? There's, a, there's something to be said about just being with God's people. It, it, it enriches you, it encourages you, and uh, you know it helps you to see that you're not the only one in the battle. Amen? And that there are other people. And sometimes, you know, when we look at uh, other folks and we realize some things and we see the prayer request of what they're going through, it, it strengthens it us, doesn't it? It increases our faith as we see others being faithful to the Lord. Amen. So draw me near. Let's sing it together. Remain seated as we sing. Draw me near. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of tonight. We had great services this morning, great Sunday school, and we're glad to have you back with us uh, tonight. Let me remind you about several announcements. Uh, the uh, kindergarten graduation on Tuesday the 17th at 6 o'clock. Sunday or uh, Wednesday night we'll be in our Bible study. We'll be looking at the church at Laodicea in the book of Revelation. I hope that you'll come uh, for that. After the uh, service we'll have our monthly a church meeting. And then on Thursday night, we have our uh, trustee work night at five o'clock, and you can come and join us for that if you want to help us 
uh, with all the tasks that we have to do. We always have some special projects we're working on as well. And then uh, on uh, uh, the 22nd, then David Fox has a graduation open house and, uh, and, uh, and everyone in the church is invited to that. We have some other meetings coming up and you can mark those down, especially the Memorial Day celebration. And uh, if you haven't signed up for that, please sign up for that out there in the foyer because we need to have a correct count of how much food to get for that. And so we're looking forward to that. Boy, I'll tell you what, we did that last year and it worked out great. We had lots of people come, stay, and uh, we'll have a great time of fellowship once again. That's on the 29th. And then uh, for our Wednesday night program for the children this summer, will be Kids Zone, and uh, that'll begin on the June the 1st, and so bring the kids, and we continue our Bible study in the book of Revelation here. It'll be a great time on Wednesday nights, like an o- o- oasis in the middle of the week, amen? We need that time that we can come together. And then uh, notice, uh, you know, uh, they'll have that breakfast on the 3rd, and Lord willing, grief recovery in June. I haven't been able to do that because of other things. And then, of course, I, as I mentioned, save those dates for Vacation Bible School. That's going to be a great Bible school. We had a number saved, you know. Uh, many churches have stopped doing Bible school altogether, but we're going to continue to go because we can still, still see people come to know Christ as their Savior. We're going to have a friend day on September 11th. Hope Children's Home will be with us on that day. We'll have a shower for them. And uh, just have a big, big day on uh, September 11th. So, I mean, you know what we're going to do on that day. We're going to give everyone that brings a friend on that day, we're going to give Chick-fil-A a gift certificate to everybody that brings a friend on that day. So you'll want to bring someone on that day. And again, Hope Children's Home will be here. It's just a blessing to have them. But we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff on that day. Dinner out in the gym uh, after the service, and it'll just be, uh, did we talk about a chick, didn't we say a chicken dinner? Did we have a chicken dinner for that? I think we're having a chicken dinner, and uh, probably get the chicken from Publix or someplace like that, and so it'll be a, a, a great time, and uh, it's been a while since we've had Hope Children's Home here, and so it'll be a great blessing to have them back here with us again. Then the other days, you can mark those down on there. And uh, just uh, lots of stuff. We're moving right ahead. You know, we're moving ahead here at Liberty Baptist Church. I have a missionary, a couple missionary letters. First of all, from Christian Radio International, Brother George Zaris, their Iranian broadcast. uh, They've had, as a result of that, uh, broadcasting uh, in Iran and Turkey. They had nine people saved as a result of the, just the broadcast in the last month. And uh, of the, those saved and others that were saved, they had a baptismal service of 17 people. And so we praise the Lord. So they're not just getting saved, but they're getting baptized as well. We praise the Lord for that. The Sinclairs uh, sent us a note, and uh, I want to continue to pray for them. Both Becca and Kate, the daughter, the wife and the daughter, both of them got malaria. And uh, they were very sick. In fact, he said uh, Becca actually passed out from it and got a concussion. Uh, and but uh, and she's had migraines and fever and so forth. Uh, but uh, they've been treating her in their home, and they seem to be doing better. But uh, we need to pray for them. That malaria is very uh, tough. You, you know, uh, we had one missionary years ago. It was in the Central African Republic, and he kept getting malaria. Got it several times and uh, finally he had to come back to the states and they wouldn't let him go back because it affected him it affected him physically and even mentally he could not think uh, after that and uh, he had to stay they could not go back to the field so we need to pray uh, for them and they they're actually going to take a four-month furlough in july through october because drew and kate are going to be going to college and so they're going to bring them back get them ready for college. And then I had a third letter, the Gall family. These are the ones we took on last year. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, they're going to Russia. Uh, and uh, 
particularly Siberia. <laughs> you talk about uh, a rough place for them to go. And, uh, you know, they're still getting their support to be able to go. They had two more churches take them on. But he, he writes a little note in this letter that uh, some of their friends there in Russia say that many of the pastors have left the Ukraine and they're going to neighboring countries uh, for their safety. And so, anyway, we need to continue to pray. I mean, he is not uh, cowering back after all of this to take the gospel there to Russia. So he's got boldness, amen? And many would be quitting and giving up, but he's not doing that. And so, uh, I praise the Lord uh, that uh, he's going to stick to it. Ushers, why don't you come to receive uh, the offering uh, tonight, and uh, we'll have a word of prayer. Rodney, why don't you come up here and lead us in a word of prayer, brother? It's good to see you here with us tonight. I'm coming right up here, lead us in a word of prayer for the offering tonight. Uh, you know, I might say this. Uh, the, uh, the prices are coming in on the fence, and uh, I got two prices, and they were much higher than we anticipated. Much higher. I'm telling you, one of the prices, one of the bids was $4,000 just for the fence, and that's for the, that's an eight-foot fence. What, that, what, that's what we have out there right now, and the other was a six-foot fence, it was $3,500, so it's, it's a lot higher than what we had anticipated. So we're going to, really, we need to, that, <laughs> that offering, we need to raise a little bit more money. I've only got those two bids right now, but if they're coming in that high, then we're going to have to raise a little, because we didn't think it was going to be that much. And so, uh, uh, so if you're inclined to help us with that, that's only two bids. We always get three bids, and one of them was just for a six-foot, and one was for an eight-foot. I think we're going to have to put an eight-foot fence around that because that's what we have around it right now, and that's what the county required us to do. So I think we're going to have to do that, and that was $4,000. And so, uh, you know, if all of us would chip in a little bit more to be able just to take care of that fence, I think we're going to have to do that. So if you pray about that. Ronnie, you come and lead us in a word of prayer for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for being with us from day to day. And Lord, I pray that the power of God sent on this place. I pray, Lord, for a revival. And I pray that you'll use this money to win the lost to you. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray. Amen. I invite you to take your hymnal, number 536, and let's stand for these, uh, the song and our chorus afterwards. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. He's talking about uh, the comparison of down here, a temporary life versus up in heaven, eternity. And, uh, you know, we need to be storing up our treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt. Amen nor where thieves can break in and steal, the Bible says. So I hope that you're working on that and sending up uh, some uh, equipment because, uh, you know, they can only build your mansion what you send up there. Amen? And that's the good works that you do for the Lord Jesus Christ. So make sure that you're serving him. Let's sing about it. Number 536, Mansion Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold, the 
but in that city where the ransom will shine. I want a cold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land. to uh, start playing the chorus, Why Should He Love Me So? But we're going to go around and greet each other tonight before we sing that. Would you greet each other this evening?
going to announce our special music will be over here. I don't want you to be looking over there. <laughs> She's kind of hiding out over there. Oh, that's okay. You could have looked over We have to move the cameras, <laughs> everything over that direction. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, Sister Jones, a blessing. You know, she had a difficult week this week, as you saw in the prayer request. We're glad she's in church today. Amen? Amen. And uh, she's going to sing to our Savior. And uh, we're glad that she's able to serve the Lord today. Walk thou the way, be lonely, and dark the shadows fall. Patch the pirate. Folks, go ahead and go right now. Take your Bible, turn to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. This psalm is a very special psalm. It's a prophetic messianic psalm. It's prophetic concerning uh, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the week, the Passion Week, the week before he was to die upon the cross of Calvary. And it talks about his suffering. And uh, tonight I'll be reading all of these verses, but rather than read them here at the beginning, I'll be reading them as we're preaching because we're looking at all of these verses tonight. So let me just read one uh, verse of Scripture. I'll let you remain seated there while I read this one verse, just verse number one. The psalmist David writes, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. What should you do when suffering comes? What should you do when suffering comes? And this is a tremendous psalm because it tells us not only what David did, but it tells us what Christ did and what we should do <laughs> because it's a prophetic, messianic psalm. And so there's some great truths here that we can learn about what we should do when suffering comes tonight. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We pray that you would teach us from your Word tonight. Help us to know what we should do when suffering comes, dear Lord. And the answer is very evident in the very first verse, how we should pray. And Father, we pray that tonight we would take this truth, we would apply it to our lives, and we would use it to be better prayer warriors, Father, and to be able to face the sufferings that come in our lives. Now, bless the preaching of the Word of God, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A man had a dream one night and he was dreaming that he's walking down a beach in California. And while he's walking down the beach in California, he prays to the Lord and, and he says, Lord, 
He said, I'd like for you to make me a, a bridge that would go from this beach all the way to Hawaii so when I wanted to, I could drive across the bridge and go to Hawaii. And in his dream, the Lord said, well, that's a pretty selfish prayer, very materialistic. He said, I can certainly do that. But he said, you should pray for something that would bring glory and honor unto me rather than something so materialistic like that. And he said, I can certainly do it. It wouldn't be difficult for me to do. I, I can do that. But you just need to pray for something that would bring honor and glory unto me. And he said, okay, Lord. And so he walks down the beach a little bit further, and he says, well, Lord, he said, I'm praying that, Lord, would you help me to understand my wife? He said, uh, I would just like to be able to understand her more and be able to know what her thinking is all about. He said, Lord, would you just help me to be able to understand my wife better? And the Lord replied, do you want that two lanes or four lanes? It was just a dream. <laughs> of course, we're speaking about prayer tonight. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. That is the theme of this passage. It's a prophetic, messianic psalm. Uh, prophetic, talking about Christ. So it's a picture of Christ. And it's a picture of Christ in the Passion Week, his, the first advent, when Christ was going to face the cross and his suffering. And so the psalmist, what's interesting, I, I look at this and I see the psalmist and how he is praying, but it's a messianic psalm, prophetic, referring to how Christ would pray. It's prophetic, prophesying how Christ would pray during the Passion Week. And of course, we already know what Christ did during the Passion Week. And so, uh, it's just to me, I, I think about this and I say, wow, what an awesome psalm we have right here. And we learn from the psalmist David, we learn from Christ how we should pray. And so, it's a tremendous psalm tonight. And let me begin by number one, when suffering comes, what should we do? Number one, when suffering comes, pray humbling yourself before God. Number one, when suffering comes, pray humbling yourself before God. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. When suffering comes, pray humbling yourself before God. Look at verses 1 and 2. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me, in the day when I call, answer me speedily. So David prayed this, but this is prophetic concerning Christ praying this, and Christ did pray this. Christ prayed to the Heavenly Father. He prayed to His Heavenly Father. And He prayed to God, crying out during that Passion Week and the sufferings that He suffered. Notice several things in that passage. First of all, he cried, do not hide your face from me. He, he cried, incline thine ear unto me. He cried, hear my prayer. He cried, answer me speedily. Jesus prayed humbly, pleading with God the Father. He humbled himself and prayed to God the Father. And, uh, and God answered his prayer and we should pray the same way. We should humble ourselves and pray unto God. When suffering comes, humble yourself before God. You know, we don't always want to do that. It's, uh, some folks don't want to humble themselves at all. When was the last time you were willing to humble yourself before God? Listen, there are times in our suffering that we need to humble ourselves before God. We shouldn't be ashamed or afraid to come down to this altar and humble ourselves before God. The reason that we don't want to come is because it is humbling to come and bow and bend your knee before God Almighty. But Jesus did that. David did that. We should do that. <laughs> when suffering comes, 
Humble yourselves. I was thinking about when I was a kid, my brother Doug and I, we were always wrestling. We enjoyed wrestling with one another. We would just wrestle. We would wrestle until someone won. We would just never quit. We would just keep wrestling. And, uh, and anything went. You know what? We would just be scuffling and wrestling. And I was, I was pretty hefty when I was a little kid, you know. And uh, I would weigh down on top of him. I would sit on his head. I would do whatever it took, you know. And, uh, but we would wrestle until finally, and sometimes it could go on for, uh, for over an hour, we would just be wrestling in the backyard, just wrestling and fighting, and we could punch. And, I mean, we would just, my folks thought it was okay because we're the boys to go ahead and do that, you know, get punch a little bit. And, and so we would wrestle back there, and we would do it until someone would finally give up, and they would have to give up. My brother would take and bend my arm behind me, and he'd say, you got to, you know what you would say, uncle? he said, are you going to say, uncle, I'm going to break your arm? You better say, uncle, Gary, I'm going to break your arm. I said, go ahead and break it. <laughs> and he'd be bending that, and it would be hurting terrible, you know what? I said, you break my arm, dad's going to break yours, you know what? And he would hold that and say, come on now, say uncle. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, we wouldn't quit until someone would finally humble themselves and say, Uncle. I think to myself, sometimes the suffering that we go through, God's just wanting us to say, Lord, I submit to you. I humble myself before you. And I pray for your help. Humbling ourselves to the Lord. I read it. Story is a cute story about a father that was praying with his two-year-old daughter. They were on their knees praying next to the bed. And the father would say a line. Remember when your children were little and you would pray? He would say a line and then she would say the same line. And he would say another line, she would say the same line. He would say another line, she would say the same line. Finally, at the end of the prayer, he said, Thank you for your many blessings. And the little girl looked up at her father and she says, You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, when suffering comes, pray humbling yourself before God. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. Number one, when suffering comes, pray humbling yourself before God. Number two, when suffering comes, pray rehearsing your troubles before the Lord. When suffering comes, pray rehearsing your troubles before God. Look at verses 3 through 11. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. They that are mad against me are sworn against me, for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass." I think about this. I think of Christ in that Passion Week before He died upon the cross of Calvary praying this prayer. I can just imagine Him praying this prayer. He's rehearsing all of His suffering. He's rehearsing all of His suffering to God. Now, the question is this. Why did Jesus rehearse all of His suffering to God the Father? Didn't God already know what He was going through? Yes, God knew. But God wanted him to fellowship with him. Do you understand that? God wants us to fellowship with him. We have to rehearse all those things. How many times do you just pray and say, Lord, just help us out, Lord, and you just go on from there. You know what? God wants to hear from you. <laughs> God wants you to rehearse those things. Individually, bring those before the Lord. I've had people say, I just don't know what to pray about. You pray about everything. God just wants to hear from you. 
pray about everything. All these things. Nine different things Jesus prayed about here. I should have them in the notes, but I didn't put them there. So I fooled you, Phil. They're not all there. But you can write these down if you want to. Nine different things, and you can look at them. I'm just taking them right out of that passage of Scripture that Christ paid for, uh, prayed for. Number one, in verse number three, his days were passing quickly. Time is passing quickly. I was talking with the shufflers about that. Time is passing quickly, and it just goes fast. But look at what he says there in, verses, in verse 3. For my days are consumed like smoke. That's what he's talking about. Time is flying by. Isn't time passing by very quickly? It'll be past you before you realize. And that's what Jesus is saying right here. Also, number two, in verse 3, he said, My bones were aching. My bones are burned as an hearth. His bones were aching. Your bones ache sometimes. I mean, you work hard. Your bones are actually aching. Number three, his heart was so broken he couldn't eat. In verse four, my heart is smitten and withered like grass so that I forget to eat my bread. Number four, in verse number five, his suffering had caused him to lose weight. Look what he says there. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. N you know that expression? He was skin and bones. That's what he's saying. He lost weight. And I can just imagine it. Number five, in verses six and seven, he was alone. He said, I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch in him a, as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. He was all alone. And I can just imagine Christ praying that prayer he was alone we've all felt that before like we're the only ones like we're all alone number six in verse number eight he said he was being made fun of by his enemies and we know that for sure verse eight my enemies reproach me all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me he was in number seven in verse nine he was weeping continuously for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Number eight, he was forsaken by God for the sins of the world. In verse 10, because of thine indignation and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. He took the sins of the world upon him. And then number nine, the ninth thing he prayed about is found in verse number 11. He was nearing death. My days are like a shadow that declineth. And I am withered like grass. He was going to die upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. And that was very soon. So he rehearses all of his sufferings before the Lord. All of these experiences. God wants us to bring those things before him. My friend, in the daytime, you have all of these things that you go through. You know what? You can take those, every one of them to the Lord. God wants to hear from you. God wants to fellowship with you. You can rehearse those to the Lord. And God will listen. God wants to hear from you. Years ago, I can't even remember what the commercial was about, but there was a commercial many years ago, and I can remember the commercial. It was really silly. There was a guy that was in a grocery store. He went up to the checkout counter, and he had a bunch of grapes in his hands. And... And as he began to check out, he would take the grapes, one grape at a time, and put it down, the, down the, on the conveyor. Because he wanted, he wanted him to weigh that one grape and to wrap it up. And it was a strange commercial, but one at a time, one grape at a time. He just kept putting them down. And the, can you see the, uh, the lady there ringing it up, one grape, and putting it down, the, weighing it, and then wrapping it up and putting it in the bag? One at a time. And I thought of that because... You know, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to bring those things individually to him. Amen? God wants us to bring all those things to him specifically. How many times have we said we need to pray specifically? Amen? God wants to know those individual things. So you can take and rehearse your entire day before the Lord. And God will be glad to hear it. Amen? And God will help you rehearse those things before God. 
say, well, it takes time. Uh, yeah, I know. But think about all the time that we have today. I was thinking about all the time-saving devices that we have today. My mother, I can remember my mother had a ringer washer. Remember the ringer washer? It's like a big pot belly thing. You put the, there's, you know, six children. And, and, it's, and you, you, you put the clothes in there. And it's ringing around, you know. And then when you're done, then it's got the ringer there at the top. And you ring that through there. Then you have to put them back through there again to rinse them off. And then my mother would take those out there and hang them on the line. How much time did that take? My, one, time, one time my mother took a picture. She put the sheets out there on the line. And my brother Doug and I crawled inside those you know you bend them in half we were crawled inside there she took pictures of us inside those sheets and uh i don't know i I'm, i don't know whatever happened to that picture probably stolen with everything else they had stolen but anyways i remember that but can you imagine how much time that took then you have to go back out there have to gather them all back in but the time we think about the time Look at all the time-saving devices that we have. I mean, if you have a, you, you're hungry, you go home tonight, you get something out of the freezer, get a pizza or something, put it in the microwave, it's done in five minutes, you know? The time-saving devices that we have. Remember mowing the grass with the push mower? Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I actually had one when I was in seminary in Chattanooga. Uh, we had to mow the grass at our uh, duplex, and that's what I had. I mowed the grass with that thing. I brought it down to Florida with me, and I tried to mow the grass. Did you ever try to mow uh, St. Augustine grass with one of those things? It's impossible. But just think about the time-saving devices that we have today. Go out there with a power mower, and you can mow the grass in no time at all. Uh, just it, remember the rotary phone? Remember having to dial a long distance number? What do you do today? You get your phone out, push one button. <laughs> you can call anybody. Well, that's, you know, I, the time save. We save a lot of time today, don't we? Yes. We've got time. We've got time. Think about the. You know, the vacuum cleaners back in the old days, those kind that you're with a little roller things on them, you know, and back and forth, and, and we have power uh, cleaners today. All of the different things that we have today to save time. We can use some of that time to pray to the Lord, can't we? Let's pray to the Lord. What do people do with their time? A lot of people, they just waste it watching TV, you know? When we can be... Take some time to pray to the Lord. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. First of all, when sufferings come, pray humbling yourself before God. Secondly, when sufferings come, uh, pray rehearsing your troubles to the Lord. I think many folks don't do that, and we should do that. Rehearse your things, your troubles, your sufferings to the Lord. Bring those things to Him. Don't just... Say, here, take care of this, but bring that to the Lord. The Lord wants to hear from you. Bring those things specifically to the Lord. Number three, when suffering comes, pray expressing your confidence in the Lord. Look at verses 12 through 22. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time uh, to favor her, yea, the set time is come, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created, shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from the heaven did the Lord behold the earth. 
to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and His praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. These last verses, he is expressing his confidence in the Heavenly Father. Jesus is doing that. Of course, David did that, and now Jesus in this prophetic psalm does that. What is he praying? He's praying for victory. There would be victory. Jesus had confidence in God the Father. David had confidence in God the Father. We can have confidence in God the Father. Look at the victory that he talks about here. First of all, number one, he had confidence that God was eternal in verse number 12. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Secondly, he had confidence in God, God's mercy in verses 13 and 14. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come, for thy servant take pleasure, servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. He had confidence that God would answer his prayers in verses 15 through 17. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. He had confidence that one day all suffering would cease. Look at verses 19 through 22. You know what this is talking about? It's talking about the millennial kingdom. No more suffering, amen? We're looking forward to that day. Beginning with verse 19, For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from the heaven did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. What is that? That's the millennial kingdom he's talking about there. When we'll rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ, no more suffering. He had confidence in that he was eternal from God the Father, verses 23 through 28. He's eternal. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God. Take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years have no end. He's eternal, amen. He's thanking God. And he has confidence that he's eternal. Verse 28, the children of the servant shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. He had complete confidence in God, and we have confidence in God. My friend, that's where we can come to church, amen? We have confidence in God. We believe in God's word. We believe that God is going to do what God has said that he would do. We can have a confidence in God for eternal life. And we can exercise our faith in him. And our faith will continue to grow in him. We can have confidence in God. We need to spend time in prayer. As we spend time in prayer, we have confidence in God. You know what? If you really have confidence in God, then you're going to pray. If you don't pray, you know why? Because you don't have confidence in God. You can say that you have confidence in God. But my friend, if you really have confidence in God, you're going to pray, aren't you? <laughs> you're going to know that God's going to carry you through. That's why I've said this a thousand times here. You know, that's why I get up and pray early because I've got confidence in God. I know that God will help me through the day. I know that if I don't take time and pray, I'll have a tough day. I could have a tough day, but if I've prayed to the Lord, I know the Lord's going to take me through it. Amen? <laughs> He'll help me get through that day. We need to pray. We need to have confidence in the Lord. He will strengthen us. He will increase our faith. Luke 13, 17, 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. 2 Timothy, Thessalonians chapter 1, and verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you toward each other 
aboundeth. Exercise our faith. Trust in the Lord. He will help us get through. Trust the Lord. You trust the Lord, you have dependence, you have confidence in God. The pastor was telling how one night he was sound asleep. Maybe this has happened to you before. I've read other stories, and I've told you stories about missionaries this, this happening to with this pastor. In the middle of the night, he woke up. And he felt like he ought to pray. <laughs> he got down on his knees and he just started praying to the Lord. He wasn't sure what in the world was going on, but he was going to have confidence in the Lord and he was trusting the Lord. And so he prayed there in the middle of the night. When he finished praying, he got, went back to bed. The next morning at breakfast with the family, he told him, he said, you know, I don't know. He said, uh, it was like the Lord woke me up to pray. And he said, I prayed and he said, I, I don't know. What in the world's going on? He said, I just prayed, trust the Lord, and I think the Lord's going to take us through this day. They all got in the car, all five of them got in the car, and they took off down the street. And as they were driving down the street, all of a sudden, the pastor saw something out of the corner of his eye, slammed on the brakes, startled everyone, and there was a little child, and that child was running between two vehicles and ran right out in front of their car, and he stopped just in time. There was no question that is what the Lord wanted him to pray about. Trusting the Lord. And he said, you know what? He said that the mother came running after that child and grabbed that child up. Didn't even notice the car there, but just grabbed that child up and took that child back into the house. He said that child will probably never know what happened on that day. That mother, she was oblivious to what was taking place. All she was concerned about was that child running out into the road and escaped from her. He said, but his family knew because he had told them that morning at the breakfast table that God had awakened him in the night and he prayed and he wasn't sure what in the world was going on, but he prayed and he believed that's what he prayed about. And God caused him to stop that car right at the right time. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know what? Has that happened to you? I know it's happened to me. The Lord has spared my life and spared the life of others because we're in touch with the Lord. Amen? We need to be in touch with God have confidence in God he can take us through these things it's unbelievable what God can do for us I was reading this story it's supposed to be a true story it's about a, a boy and he is praying to the Lord for a hundred dollars I I don't know why he needed the hundred dollars but he's praying for a hundred dollars and he's prayed for two weeks for the Lord to give him a hundred dollars he's praying for a hundred dollars and finally he wrote a letter to God asking for $100, and he, and he wrote on the, put it in an envelope, and he wrote on the envelope, God USA. <laughs> and he put that in the, in the, in, in the mailbox, uh, Phil. He put it in the mailbox. And uh, the postman came by, and he saw that letter, God USA. And so you know what that postman did? He sent it to the President of the United States. At that time, it was Bill Clinton. He sent it to Bill Clinton, the president of the United States. That letter got to the president. His secretary brought it in. He looked at that letter, and he said to the secretary, send him $5. <laughs> he was touched by it. Send him $5. So they sent him $5. The $5 came to the little boy. And he was happy with the $5. His father overheard him praying this prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the $5. He said, I don't know why you sent it through Washington. He said, but like always, they took 95%. Amen. <laughs> I don't know how that couldn't be real, you know. <laughs> I think it, nobody could make up something like that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. Amen? Amen? That's the theme of this great psalm. Isn't that a great psalm? It is a tremendous psalm. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed. The Christian should pray to God in their sufferings. Now our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. And 
Would you make a commitment to the Lord to pray to him in times of your sufferings? You say, by the grace of God, I want to pray to God in my sufferings. I want to spend more time in prayer to God. And I'm going to rehearse these things with the Lord. I, I'm going to humble myself to the Lord. I'm going to have confidence in the Lord. And uh, I want to make that commitment to the Lord tonight. Would you pray for me, Pastor? I want to make that commitment. Would you pray for me tonight? Slip your hands up all through the building. I want to make that commitment to the Lord tonight. Thank you very much. Amen. There might be some new things here. Making, re, uh, rehearsing all these things. As I studied this, it made an impact on my life. I, I, it made such an impact that I don't just pray in generalities in the morning, but I pray in specifics. I will rehearse those things, and that takes me longer. I mean, if you have a need, if you have a knee problem, if you have a foot problem, I will actually tell the Lord, you've got a foot problem, you have a knee problem. Whatever that problem is, I don't just say, Lord, bless these people and help these people with their health, but I pray specifically for those things. And that's what we should do, take that time. You say, but it takes time. I know it takes time, but we have more time to do those things. Let's do those things. Let's spend that time. And I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Maybe tonight you have a special need that you would like included in prayer tonight. You have a specific need that you would like for us to pray about tonight. And you would say, here, I, we have a specific need. And, and, and I can't go around and ask you every one of those needs. And some of them you may not want to even share with me, but the Lord will understand those things tonight. And you say, I have a very specific need here tonight. Would you pray for me in particular, Pastor? Slip your hands up all through the building. I have a specific need. Thank you very much. All through the building. Amen. All through the building. And we're going to include that in prayer. And would you pray? Would you pray tonight? Would you pray for these folks tonight? There are many people that raise their hands. A majority of the people raise their hands here tonight. Would you pray for them? Would you be uh, willing to humble yourself and pray? That's what Christ did. That's what David did. We should follow that example. Let's not be afraid to bend our knee before the Lord. Let's not be afraid. Let's not be ashamed. But let's humble ourselves unto the Lord. Then tonight, maybe you need salvation. God will save you. He's promised to save you. If you will, by faith, call upon him, repenting of your sin, asking Christ to save you, he will save you. A simple prayer. Lord, I, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I know that you died, were buried, and rose again to save me from my sin. I'm trusting you to save me tonight. Save me. Give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple prayer tonight. You prayed that prayer. You'd say, you know what, Pastor? I just prayed that prayer and asked Christ to save me, and I, I believe he saved me. Anyone here tonight, you prayed that and you asked Christ to save you. Anyone? Maybe online you prayed that prayer. Please contact us here at the church. Let us know that you trusted in Christ as your Savior. Dear Lord, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for this prophetic messianic psalm that we have before us tonight concerning prayer, concerning Christ in prayer. And Father, I pray that you would help us to follow the guidance that we've received here from the Word of God tonight. Help us, Father, to pray. Help us to pray specifically. Help us to rehearse our sufferings because you desire to hear those things. You want us to fellowship with you. Christ, fellowship with you in prayer. And you desire for us to fellowship with you. And we pray that you would help us to rehearse all those things in prayer. Father, help us to be real prayer warriors. And then, dear Lord, there are people here tonight, many here tonight, that have specific requests. And Father, you know those requests right now. You know what's on their heart. They're thinking about those things right now. And dear Lord, you can certainly meet their needs. And we commit them to you, Father. And we pray that you would meet those needs even tonight. Now bless these people, 
be with the invitation. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to sing an invitation uh, hymn. And God has spoken to your heart. You can come here and pray at the altar. Pray at the front, on the front seats here. That's what the, the invitation is for, for us. It gives us an opportunity to come. Why don't you come tonight as we begin to sing? Why don't you come right now?